Hello, my dear ones. We have a message from Tyler today, who writes, God bless you, Father Seraphim. I'm struggling continually to reconcile evolutionary biology with our Christian creation story. So many figures within the Orthodox world label evolutionary theory as heretical because they claim that it is incompatible with Genesis. Father, I don't know what to do with this. It's shameful to say, but I feel like I'm losing my faith over it. I can't accept the creationist claims that evolution was made up to undermine our religion and to make us lose our faith. As a person with a degree in psychology and having taken courses in biology and evolutionary psychology, I can't just close my eyes to the overwhelming evidence. Pray for me, Father, and feel free to drop a comment with your thoughts if you wish. I sincerely hope that you and the monasteries are striving in Christ's boundless love. God bless you all. Tyler God bless you too, dear Tyler. There's a reason why I waited for almost two months before I approach this topic. Um, and that reason is that, in, in a way, I am the worst person to answer this question, because like you, I struggle with many aspects of our faith. And uh, I used to struggle a lot more when I was younger, in my early 20s, even in my early years in the monastery. But unlike you, I was blessed to be surrounded by a monastic community that had love for me, had patience for me, had compassion for me, who wanted to save me more than they wanted to prove themselves right before me. Unlike me, you don't have that. You are surrounded by people who want to simply prove you wrong and prove themselves right. No one in the world, apart from your family and those who love you, your friends and your spouse if you have one, no one in the world will love you, will have enough patience for you, enough compassion and, and just care for you as to wait for you to grow, whatever that growth may be, dear Tyler. I struggled with many things, including the uh, story of Genesis. Um, but things have, have been settled for me in the meantime. Each of these things with which I struggled have either been settled in their own unique way, or I can feel that God is telling me to wait longer before things are solved and at peace in my heart and in my soul. I would not worry for a second, dear Tyler, about any voice that tells you that you are a heretic. I was told I was a heretic by someone who had only about two years of being an orthodox person because I dared to tell that person that Christ would never use a gun in self-defense or to protect his mother or his disciples. Although the story is in the gospel, I was told I was a heretic. Uh, you have to get used to this somehow. And the only accusation of heresy that should count for you are those that come from Christ himself, either through your spiritual father or through your conscience. I would encourage you to be painfully honest, completely naked spiritually in your honesty before Christ, Bring these doubts, bring these stumbling blocks before Christ in your prayer and never tire of bringing them up again and again as and when they become impossible to bear for you. Don't pretend that somehow these things don't matter to you, or don't, don't pretend that somehow they've been solved for you, if they still matter and if they are not yet solved. Don't pretend to be something you are not. Christ loves you, dear Tyler, just as you are now in this moment, with your stumbling block, with your doubt. 
Christ loves you because he sees in you your potential. He sees in you that beautiful, glorious, light-filled being, the saint he created you to become. And Christ has the love to wait for you, has the wisdom and the care and the patience and the compassion to wait for you to grow. Be honest before Christ, Christ in your prayer. Tell him everything. But at the same time, do tell him that you are going to prioritize his teaching over your own thinking. Tell him, I don't know how to make peace with this. Please make peace for me inside my own being concerning this issue. But in the meantime, my Lord, I will prioritize your teaching over my understanding. There have been many instances um, when I struggled similarly, dear Tyler. And if these people who condemn you were to be honest before their own conscience and before Christ, they would acknowledge that they themselves have similar doubts, similar stumbling experiences, stumbling blocks in their lives. They are very quick to acknowledge the truth of Genesis because Genesis is so far away. But most of these people will struggle to acknowledge Christ's teaching about not using a gun or Christ's teaching about using your own wealth in order to support those who are homeless or poor. These are people who are very keen to prove their holiness by holding on to truths that are completely removed from their lives, don't affect their lives in any way. But the things that come close to home that could potentially affect them, oh boy, they become the opposite of Christ's teaching in an instant. So I wouldn't really care that much. The things that matter, the things of which you should care, are your honesty before Christ. Because Christ knows that you are struggling before you know that you are struggling. And because your way out of your struggle is not that you should understand more, this is a mistake that you are making, and I know you're making it because I made it myself. The way out of your struggle is to simply bow your head in love, in trust and obedience before Christ and his teaching, and to simply wait until he will make peace within yourself. There are so many stories that I could share with you as examples of uh, just the importance of patience and just the importance of prioritizing Christ over our own brains. One that I've just recently been reminded of is what happened on the island of St. Brandon. It's one of the islands where we go on pilgrimage every summer. Its uh, Gaelic name is Ilan and Neve, and it means the Rock of the Saint. We all knew by tradition that that is the place where St. Brandon in the 500s, even before St. Columba, had built a monastery. And we all believed that the beehives that are preserved there, you've got these almost complete beehives still on the island, are St. Brandon's personal cells. And yet it took centuries and centuries of waiting until archaeologists came and they dated the rocks and the work and the buildings to the exact time when St. Brandon was present on Ilan and Neve. It took centuries for some minds to believe. It took centuries for some minds to prioritize the truth of tradition over their own personal truth. The risk there, the problem there, is that we don't live for centuries and centuries and centuries. So the only way to make peace with this is to acknowledge our own doubt before Christ, in our prayer before Him, to ask Him to settle the matter in our own mind, in our own being, and then maybe things will be settled by the end of our life, or maybe not. But even if they are not, even if you die with this doubt in you, the simple fact that you've bowed down your head before Christ in honesty and obedience, and you've told him that you prioritize his truth, his capital T truth, because he is the truth, 
over your own truth, which is a scientific truth that can change from decade to decade. That simple truth, that simple fact can save you, dear Tyler. There is also a great danger, and I want to say this before we finish, there is a great demonic danger that one should found one's faith on the foundation of scientific proofs or scientific truths. I've seen many, many people, especially in the Protestant world, who believe something just because a university or an institute they've established has managed to rediscover Noah's Ark or have found some sort of proof on the bottom of the Red Sea that indeed the sea was parted for Israel to cross over. Even if these proofs are real, you should not found your faith on words coming from science. Because that's not faith anymore, dear one. Faith is to walk on water, like St. Peter. When you start looking around and you try to understand how you're walking on water, you will sink down the way he did. Faith is not based on truths uttered by human, earthly, dying lips. Faith is when you sacrifice your own emotion, your own logical understanding, your own ability to know through your body even, through your eyes and your ears. When you sacrifice all of that, when you empty yourself of all of that, and despite everything you can understand, you choose Christ, and you choose his teaching over you. That's not lying, because, as I was saying in the beginning, you still acknowledge in your prayer to Christ that this is something with which you struggle. It's just the beginning, my beloved Tyler. Wait for Christ to reveal whatever solution he has for you, and Christ will wait for you. Put this thing on a shelf and just put it on a shelf and wait. Just tell Christ you struggle with it and that you prioritize his teaching and that you are waiting for his resolve. And try not to make this the central thing of your life and of your faith. Because the reality is, and I've learned that myself, that none of these Topics, none of these theoretical stumbling blocks can prevent us from praying or from fasting or from loving or from doing the little good things that we can do or from abstaining from the sin that we can abstain from. None of these theoretical stumbling blocks affect in a practical way the reality of your day-by-day -day life before Christ. Just put this thing on hold and live your life in honesty, painful honesty before Christ, Christ, day by day, hour by hour. And as you grow into your own potential, as you grow into that saint whom Christ created you to be, your own understanding will be completely transformed. And with that new, saintly, transformed understanding, you might discover that there actually was no tension where you saw tension, and that there was no fear where you perceived fear. We all struggle, my dear Tyler, but it takes, it takes a real Christian to acknowledge that he or she struggles, and it takes a saint in the making, to once having acknowledged the struggle, to bow down before Christ and to say, despite what I feel, despite what I can understand, I choose your truth over mine, my Savior. Be blessed beyond your wildest help dear Tyler, and all of you out there who, like Tyler and like myself, are struggling with one aspect or another in our faith. And I can't 
go before I thank you for all your support, every single donation, no matter how small, every single purchase, whether it's a prayer rope or a booklet or an icon or whatever it is, helps us survive here on Mal and on Iona and helps us in due time with God's blessing to grow the way we have almost miraculously grown from one crazy monk on an island in the Hebrides to two beautiful monasteries now. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Amen.